Well, good morning to you. Good morning to you all, and welcome to our service today. And a warm welcome to any who may be who are visiting us for the first time today. We hope that you feel very much part of our fellowship, and welcome to those who are joining online at home as well. There are some intimations. Um, you will have noticed the the new bench out there, which is in um, memory of Mary Mc. Person, um, at some point in the sum, summer, when it's better weather, we'll um, have a, a, a dedication of that outside. But um, I thought it was too wet today to do it. Um, I'm sorry to tell you of the of the death of John McCallum, um, whom many of you know, um, great piper who lived in the village here for many years. Um, um, we don't have a, a date or a time yet for the service, um, but I'll so look out for the notices in the village um, f- for for the service. Our thoughts are with Tony and Mary at this time. I've had a um, last night. Katrina phoned me to tell me about the community minibus, which is now um, coming back and we'll be in the village on Thursday um, afternoon and anyone who would like details of, of where it's going and how to get on it on Thursday, if they would phone Katrina Spence, if you don't have her number I can give it to you. Um, that's good that the community minibus is now um, back. On Monday I don't know this is which are printed Monday Congregational Board and Kirk se- Session meet in the church hall and Nitin and Natter have their meetings as I've detailed at the, in the order of service on Wednesday afternoon and evening and um, a notice about the next lunch club which is on the Tuesday the 21st of, um, which is about 10 days away and there's tea and coffee in the hall after the service and all are welcome to remain for a continuation of fellowship there. Um, these are all the intimations. And so we come to our time of worship. Um, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Let us worship God and sing to his praise. We begin, as it's um, one of the things we often do in the Church of Scotland is sing the, the Psalms, or sing from the Psalms. So we're going to start with, from the Red Hymn Book, um, a setting of the Eye to the Hills will lift mine eyes. 139 will sing the four Psalm verses. I to the hills will lift mine eyes from whence doth come my aid? My safety cometh from the Lord, who heaven and earth hath made. Thy foot will not let slide, nor will slumber that thee keeps. Be old he that keeps Israel, he slumbers not nor sleeps. The Lord thee keeps, the Lord thy shade. On thy right hand doth stay The moon by night thee shall not smite Nor yet the sun 
Shall we pray together? Let us pray. Almighty God, God of grace and God of wonder, we worship you and we praise your name. You are a holy God, great in power, abounding in wisdom and love and mercy. And you have come near to us in Jesus Christ. Lord, we come to worship you, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. We offer you our worship, and we come to ask you to help us. We are your people, made in your likeness, and yet, Lord, there is so much about us that is not quite right. We humbly confess our need for your mercy. But we thank you that you are a God of compassion and grace and mercy and that in Jesus Christ we have the forgiveness of our sins that we need. We thank you, Lord, for loving us, for bringing us into the family and household of faith to the house of prayer. We thank you that your Spirit binds us in unity even when we are apart. But it's good to see one another and be in fellowship. We thank you that people can be share sharing in our service from home at different times. Lord, as we make this our time of worship, we ask you to bless us, to make us strong and whole. Send us your Spirit, Lord. Awaken faith in us and lead us in the paths of righteousness. O God of healing and wholeness, come to us with your love and may your merciful power make us strong and glad again. For Jesus' sake. Amen. I brought today to look at, and don't know if you can, how well you can see it, but it's a, a miniature icon um, from a, a Russian icon painter um, whose name was And Andrei Rublyov, and he was a, a monk in initially in the Holy Trinity Monastery in Moscow, or near Moscow, and then moved to another one called the Adro Andronica Monastery. He was born around the year 1360 or 70, around about then, and died 1427. And this is one of the most famous icons that he created, um, and it's called the Hospitality of Abraham, but it's also the, called the Icon of the Holy Trinity. And I chose it this Sunday because... This is Trinity Sunday, where we think of God as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And um, it's, it's based in the passage of where Abraham welcomes three visitors as he's sitting near the, the trees at Mamre. And he welcomes the three visitors, offers them hospitality. And as he converses with them, it becomes clear that the Lord is there in, amongst them. And so this is um, often seen at, at this passage as an introduction to the idea of, of God in three persons. And 
Um, if you were just if you study these icons in detail, they, there's lots of particular symbolic details of the colours. For example, um, the, the the figure in the middle is is, is supposed to be Jesus, um, who's coloured with a brown robe, which links him to the earth because Christ was made flesh, and the other. The others are the Father and the Holy Spirit. Um, so we'll be thinking about um, Abraham and this passage and God as Trinity in our service today. And now we'll hear the readings, um, come, which Anne's going to read to us first from Genesis and then from Hebrews.
It was faith that made Abraham able to become a father, even though he was too old and Sarah herself could not have children. He trusted God to keep his promise. Though Abraham was practically dead, from this one man came as many descendants as there are stars in the sky, as many as the numberless grains of sand on the seashore. It was faith that all, that all these persons died. They did not receive the things God had promised, but from a long way off they saw them and welcomed them, and admitted openly that they were foreigners and refugees on earth. Those who say such things make it clear that they are looking for a country of their own. They did not keep thinking about the country they had left. If they had, they would have had the chance to return. Instead, it was a better country that they longed for, the heavenly country. And so God is not ashamed to call for, that, for them to call him their God, because he had prepared a city for them. It was faith that made Abraham offer his son Isaac as a sacrifice when God put Abram to the test. Abram was the one to whom the God had made him promise, yet he was ready to offer his only son as a sacrifice. Amen, and may God have his blessings to be reading from his holy word. Thank you, Anne, for reading to us. Let's turn to we turn now to mission praise, and we turn to 139 there. Father, we adore you. Father, we adore you. Lay our lives before you. How we love you. Jesus, we adore you. Join together in prayer once again. Hallelujah. We praise you, Lord. We give you glory. We give you honour. We give you praise. We are your people, Lord, all of our days. O, oh, send us your spirit. Make us your own. Heal us and shape us. We are loved and known. Lord, it is good that you have revealed your precious, saving, redeeming love in Jesus Christ. We thank you too for the daily blessings that you give us, food for our bodies, friends to speak to, living creatures that make us happy. We give thanks for fragrant flowers, for stunning scenery, for magnificent mountains, for river and loch. But Lord, we know that all is not right with our world. We are concerned for the people of Ukraine for the many casualties of war, 
for displaced peoples from there and other countries. O Lord, guide the nations of the world as they seek to help and to deal with this situation. We pray for an end to this conflict affecting Russia and Ukraine and pray for the safety of all who are caught up in fighting there. We think of our land where established truths are questioned and people drift from biblical teaching. O oh Lord, Lord, may what is right prevail. We think of our country with rising costs of food and fuel and the worries of those with limited budgets. Lord, we pray that right may prevail. Lord, we pray for one another, especially for those going through really difficult times. Especially we think of those who have experienced bereavement and especially remember Tony and Mary Chisholm at this time. We pray for others who have experienced loss that they may know your comfort and your peace. We think of those who are in care homes and especially remember Mary and May, Brenda Spence, Pat Kane, Jesse Craig, Isabel, James and, and John from this village. And pray that they may know your peace and your love and mercy. We pray for one another and in a time of quietness we bring our own prayers to you. We sum up our prayer in the words that Jesus has taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us remain seated for the next hymn, 5, 6, 9, which we'll sing through twice. Reach out and touch the Lord as he goes by. We'll remain seated.
Let us pray, loving God, as we reflect upon your word to us today. We pray that you'd speak to our hearts in a way that is fresh and relevant to our need. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Thursday, the 9th of June, was St. Columbus Day. As you probably know, Columba brought Christianity to the Northwest Highlands. He's known as the Apostle to the Scots or the Apostle to the Picts. He arrived with his band of followers of fellow monks um, in the year 563, um, traveling in little boats called Coracles to Scotland, and they founded monastic settlements, most famously Iona. According to tradition, um, on this Sunday, the 9th of June, 597 AD, um, Columba was um, announced to his fellow monks that the time for him to be gathered amongst the saints had come, and he bid them all farewell. And apparently the monastery work horse came and snuggled him in to him for a while and made its own farewells and then Columba um, fell asleep in the Lord and was buried by the monks in the abbey. Columba or Colum Keel as he's sometimes known is also one of Ireland's patron saints. Those early Christian Celtic believers from, uh, that were so influential in bringing the faith to these parts often spoke of God as Trinity, God in three persons, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. St. Patrick famously used the shamrock or the clover with its three leaves, so it's sometimes called trifoliate um, because it's got th three leaves but one stem to explain how God is one and yet three, three distinct personalities. There's one hymn in the hymn book that we don't really sing very often, um, Christ is the World's Redeemer, that is attributed to Columba, and that hymn refers to God as the perfect trinity, God as Father, Son and Holy Spirit, three persons. And that's important because they are referred to in personal terms in the Bible. They're not, for example, the Holy Spirit is not a force. It's, he's he, not it or she. They're three co-equal persons. They're not totally separate from each other, but in some sense they subsist or live together, in a sense dwell together, conjoined, if you like, supporting one another, working as a unity, as a team. One way of to think about God as Trinity is to think about like a mountain that you can see from different angles. Think about the, the Pap of Glencoe, for example. You can see it from Glencoe Village. You can see it from here. Or you can see it from other angles. And how you look at it or how it appears to you will depend on the angle from which you view it. But it's the same mountain. When we think of God the Son, God the Spirit, God the Father, we are focusing on different aspects of God's amazing being. God is a trinity of love. The Bible doesn't actually use the word trinity. It doesn't even set out a clear teaching or doctrine about it, but the idea of the trinity or the content of it is clearly there, like when Jesus sent out the disciples and said, go and make disciples, followers of me and of all nations, and baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We experience God in a threefold way. Through the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, we experience the amazing fatherly love of God, the love of the Father. We experience God's gracious presence within, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit is experienced as we stand 
beneath the cross and accept Jesus as personal saviour. And we are enabled thereby to grasp the truth of the gospel and so rejoice in its glorious hope. This passage from the life of Abraham gives us this little hint that God is three persons. Abraham became aware that the Lord was amongst these mysterious visitors. They arrived at the heat of the day, perhaps not the most convenient of times to arrive, the time of meal time perhaps or the time of a siesta. But Abraham offered hospitality. He arranged for food to be brought and as they ate, they had fellowship. And as they had fellowship in this way over food, God's purposes for Abraham and his family began to be unfolded. Perhaps we could make a connection or a comparison to how some of the disciples of Jesus, after he was risen, met Jesus on the Emmaus Road. And there, after they travelled a while together, they ate together. Jesus was constrained to remain behind and he ate with them. And as they did so, their eyes were opened. They knew the Lord was with them. And Abraham, as he shared with these people, knew that the Lord was amongst them. Psychologists tell us that body language tells us or informs a lot about people, their personalities and their, their attitudes. It's interesting to look at this story and compare the body language of Abraham and Sarah. Abraham was looking out from the tent door at the heat of the day. It was as if he was ready for this visitation. It was as if Abraham was already on the move, having heard God's call to leave the land of Haran and go to where God was leading him. God had said that he would make a covenant between himself and Abraham. He had said to Abraham, walk before me, be thou perfect. Abraham had his sights on a destination that he was not yet seeing. And so Abraham, having received or welcomed these visitors, arranged for food to be brought. Perhaps it's, we could remember there's a saying in the Bible, be not neglectful to entertain strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels, unawares. Um, that was a saying that Mary Williams always often quoted to me for some reason. I know she was always very keen to offer hospitality. Many of you remember her. She's now in a care home in Inverness. Many of us grew up with families who were um, always delighted to offer food and plenty of it when visitors arrived. The, Edin the reputation of Edinburgh people who are said to say you'll have had your, your dinner um, is quite unjustified. People um, it was the way of doing things that you didn't let people go away hungry. As Abraham served these visitors with food, it became a fellowship meal. And that in ancient Israel often sealed a covenant. A covenant. Jewish meals traditionally began would begin with sharing bread, breaking bread. Abraham stood with them not sitting with them, as if he knew he wasn't an equal. Sarah remained further away, further inside the tent. Spiritually and psychologically, she was at some distance from what was going on. You can hardly blame Sarah for her initial incredulity. She was nearly 90. What chance was there of... of, of what chance was there of her having a baby at that age. 
But the visitor reacted, Why did Sarah laugh? Is anything too hard for the Lord? Sarah was embarrassed and denied that she'd reacted this way. But the visitors and the reader knows otherwise. But that's not the end of the story because the biblical record does tell us that through faith, Sarah received strength to conceive. You see, God's grace can overcome even hardness of heart or lack of faith. God loves it, loves it when we trust him. The plain matter of the fact is that without faith we cannot please God. And it's not just having faith that God exists. We mustn't deny God his grace or his power or his willingness to help us. We're told in the Bible that God has feelings. The Spirit has feelings. The Spirit can be grieved. We can offend God by the attitude of mind, mind that says, well, he'll never, he'll never help me or he'll never do anything in my life. No, God wants to do things in our lives. We're never too old, we're never too useless for the Lord to work in our hearts. We read in some places in the life in Jesus, Jesus experienced that because of people's hardness of heart or lack of belief, he wasn't able to perform many miracles. There's certainly an attitude of unbelief that we need to guard against. Don't ever think though that God won't or can't do something good or useful in your life he most certainly can he wants to and because Abraham was faithful and Sarah proved faithful also God was able to continue and work out his purposes in their lives and we can be part of God's plan ourselves as individuals and as a church if we have the faith that leads ourselves to offer our efforts and our time and our energy wholly to God and to say to the Lord, here I am, wholly available. Lead me in the ways you want. Here I am, Lord. God can make even the spiritually dead come to life. That's the work of the Holy Spirit the regenerating spirit of God. There's absolutely nothing that God cannot do to revive his church, to re renew our lives, to make us come to life, to renew and restore us, to bring us joy and wholeness. We're told that with Abraham and Sarah, God brought forth many, like the many grains of sand by the seashore. Last Tuesday we were down um, in Edinburgh and we went to the beach at Musselburgh um, and the tide was out and we walked over the sand, the many grains of sand by the seashore. That's a picture of God's abundance. Abraham knew that God was calling him. He obeyed not knowing where it would take him. God has a plan for our lives. We must trust him to take us on towards it. God has sent us his son to help us to be our life, to bring us newness of life, to bring us wholeness. And God has sent the Spirit so that all that Christ has wrought can be made real in us. The, new, the saving love of God in Jesus Christ made real to us through the operation of the Spirit. The love of God is offered freely to us in Jesus Christ as Saviour. He calls us not to trust in ourselves, not to trust in our own goodness or our own energy, but to put our whole trust in Jesus Christ for salvation. Abraham stood looking ahead to the land of promise, his destination. And we 
look to the fulfillment of God's purposes and plans in this life as well as in the next. Like the Celtic saints who came in coracles from Ireland to Scotland, we sojourn towards a city without foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Amen and thanks be to God for um, this preaching on his holy word and to him be glory and praise. Um, on our service sheet I've written out a prayer which is attributed to St Columba and I thought we could use this together, the prayer of St Columba, we could say it together. Be, O Lord, a guiding star above me, a smooth path below me, a kindly shepherd behind me, a bright flame before me, today, tonight, and forever. Amen. And let's sing now 237. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
and scar and see Peace of God, which is beyond all understanding, guard your hearts and thoughts in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you and with all whom you love, both now and forevermore. Because blessing surround you each day as you trust him and walk in his way. May his presence with you guard and keep you from sin. Go in Go in joy, go in love.